What's the biggest PR disaster you've ever seen? Some years back, there was an incident where a Greyhound passenger went crazy and beheaded another passenger. Greyhound had just rolled out an ad campaign titled Road Rage, you've never heard of Bus Rage. It was very quickly, very quietly pulled. Probably Mars Ice Cream. A couple of decades ago, in the UK, they planned an entire month summer campaign on Capital Radio, starting in June. When the trigger temperature reached 21 degrees Celsius, all these promotions, competitions, giveaways etc etc would kick off, so the Capital DJs were announcing the imminent start of the great ice cream event and, it was cold and rainy, for week after week after week. In fact, the mercury stayed stubbornly below 21 degrees for the entire time the campaign was supposed to run, and it never kicked off at all. Moral, don't rely on the British weather as the linchpin of anything. I went to a university where the mascot was a pronghorn deer. We got a new gym and sports complex so to open it they made a mascot costume and, to make it seem like the largely disinterested student body was involved, put the naming of the mascot to a vote. Of course Frisky won in a very public, automated online voting process. The bot came out a few days later and announced the name was Pronges. This was announced at the first game in the new venue and came out to loud booze. Similarly, my university had a vote to determine the new school mascot, Admiral Akbar won. The mascot ended up being the black bear. A Philadelphia pretzel shop opened up in our neighborhood and thought it would be funny to hand out marketing advertisement papers that looked like Philly parking tickets on one side. So the neighborhood woke up to find their cars littered with tickets and everyone had a meltdown of rage. People stormed over to their car ripping the ticket out of their windshield, only to find it was a joke. The other side was an advert to the new pretzel shop. Man, did that shop get it. Calls, threats, screams, you name it. I don't know how they stayed in business, but it was a rocky start. And for anyone not familiar with the region, the area this happened in has overly crowded street parking. So people are already super stressed out about parking cars, too limited parking places, etc. Targeting the parking situation was a bad, bad move. Any other joke would have been fun. This nearly incited murders. The gang opens a pretzel shop. When the game Burnout 2, 3, came out. The game was big about driving on the wrong side of the road, crashing and general law breaking. So they had a campaign where you could send in your speeding tickets, and they would pay them for you. Oh boy, did the police get annoyed at that one. Back in the 1990s, Hoover, then, the biggest vacuum cleaner company in the UK and many other markets, made the biggest PR misstep I've ever seen. The business need was they had a load of old stock of vacuums and washing machines that needed shifting. So, rather than aggressively cut prices which could undermine the amount of money people would be willing to pay for such a product in the future, they went for a classic solution, a sales promotion. That was the right call, but what happened next, what a complete cluster of CK. The sales promotion was that if you spent more than £100 on a Hoover product, you would receive two free return airline tickets to any destination in Europe. A very generous deal, but given it would free up costly warehouse space and they could buy cheap airline tickets in bulk, Hoover were confident that they could run the promotion and still make money. Wrong, the problem Hoover ran into is that huge numbers of people went out and bought a Hoover product just because they wanted the airline tickets. People were buying new vacuums and washing machines, because they calculated that it was cheaper than simply buying their holiday flights. The company quickly found itself totally overwhelmed by the demand both for tickets and products, and this also ruined their maths. They were now making a huge loss on every product sold. However, for a time, they didn't realize this. They instead saw a huge boom in a sales and revenue, without realizing every sale came with a commitment to invest in expensive airline tickets. As a result, the business decided to expand the promotion to include new long distance destinations like the USA. This double down decision is perhaps the worst double down decision in the history of marketing in the UK. By the time they realized what was actually happening, it was too late. The promotion has no real terms and conditions and so Hoover were unable to protect themselves. As long as the in-store promo messages remained, people expected to get the deal. The huge run on products and thus airline tickets totally swamped the company in administrative pain and financial disaster. In the end, 
the company were taken to court many many times for broken promises and unfulfilled claims. The courts ruled against them in every case, as the promotion clearly guaranteed tickets with purchase. It was not a competition. The final result was an estimated loss of 50 million pounds, and the firing of a number of board directors. No surprises that the CMO was among them. The ongoing damage to the company and the brand was so big, they were sold just a few years later at a cut down price to an Italian company and the Hoover brand in Europe has never been the same since. One thing they figured was that most people would forget to claim their free flights to Europe as the months go by. That logic can work with freebies of lesser cost, but not for holiday flights. Their accompanying free flights to the US promotion helped to remind anyone who had forgotten to claim their flights. Two years ago, the Pittsburgh Penguins decided to do a Q&A session on Twitter involving James Neal, a skilled player with, well, let's say that he's not exactly known for fair play. He has a history of borderline and outright dirty play, including cross-checking opponents in the face, elbowing them in the head, and also an incident of kneeing an opponent in the head. Sample questions from various hockey fans. James, do you get the biggest thrill out of kneeing someone in the head or cross-checking them in the head? Do you make rocket noises when you launch yourself at people's heads if not? Why? Do you think before cross-checking people in the head or is it just pure instinct? If you opened a bar how cheap would your shots be? What part of the stick should I be holding to really lay a good cross-check to someone's head? If a tree falls down in the forest and nobody is around to hear it, does James Neal still cross-check it in the face? What favorite memory have you robbed from one of the players you need to the head? A train leaves NYC traveling at 97 miles per hour. Another train leaves LA traveling at 76 miles per hour. When do you headshot the child riding coach? If you could go back in time and play with any player in history, which one would you knee in the face? If you were holding a baby and dropped it on its head, would it already be unconscious from your previous elbow to the head? But James, my roommate stole my food. Should I lunge at his head, elbow him in the temple or drive my knee into his skull? If the moon was made of barbecue spare ribs, would you still leave your feet to charge at it? When you go into a corner and there are three people, and you only have two elbows, how do you decide which one gets need? That happens to almost all the bad ones. I remember R. Kelly did a Q&A on Twitter and people completely dragged him. Somebody said something like, dang. R. Kelly only answered 16 questions. This pervert can't do anything over 18. Nestia had a promotion 5 years back where in every 12 pack they had a coupon for a free 12 pack. As soon as the kids in my town caught wind of it they brought as many cars as possible and just bought 6 cases, dumped them in their car, took the coupons, got 6 more cases, and so on. Nestia is my favorite drink of all time so as soon as I heard about it, maybe 4 hours in, I checked every major store and they were clean out. I even totally found a bunch of diet nesties in a random shoppers and still made a decent haul. People got creative with the little hundreds of cans of Nestia. I built a throne. I still can't believe this crap actually happens. TL. DR. Infinite Nestia. There is this department store in Brazil that had put in their TV ads buy anything you want for the price you want and some guy decided to buy a bunch of expensive stuff and said he was willing to pay only one dollar. The store said he couldn't and then he proceeded to sue the company and eventually won the lawsuit. They removed it from TV. In 1993, Pepsi ran a contest in the Philippines promising 1 million pesos. $40,000, to whoever found the number 349 on their bottle cap, but they accidentally made 800,000 winning caps. The mistake led to death threats against Pepsi executives and nationwide outrage. That's an easy fix, you just split the cash amongst the winners like they do with the lottery. So one and a quarter pesos per winner, or about 5 cents US, before taxes of course. Martha Coakley running against Scott Brown for Ted Kennedy's old Senate seat. After being criticized for not running an enthusiastic enough campaign as Brown continued to close the gap between them she responded. What do they want me outside Fenway Park shaking hands in the cold? A shot at Brown who was doing that very thing a few days before. She proceeded to lose the election and Massachusetts had its first Republican senator since 1979. She also lost to Charlie Baker in the 2014 governor's race. I have no freaking idea why or how she keeps getting nominated. 
She couldn't get elected dog catcher in the commonwealth. I thought of another one, the launch of SimCity, the recent remake. So they decided on some horrible combination of DRM and online only play. Cut to launch day when the servers were jam packed and everyone was getting lol you can't join the server messages. But couldn't even play the game as a sandbox because it had to be online only at the time. If they could even get on to get past the DRM. EA eventually got it under control. But only after a lot of people abandoned the game. And eventually they had to put in a sandbox mode so people could play the dang game without being tethered all the time. And again. It's SimCity. Not World of Warcraft. Their dreams of some MMORPG style version of the game were wildly afar from what most people that I know of wanted from the game. And after launch someone sniffed his game traffic and found out it wasn't even communicating with the servers. It didn't need to be online in the first place. It was just cheap DRM as everyone suspected. The Mountain Dew promotion that let people on the internet come up with names for the new flavor and then allowed voting for the favorite. If I remember correctly the top submissions were squirting granny and Hitler did nothing wrong. Don't trust people on the internet. It was actually gushing granny. The reign of former United CEO Jeff Smithuk. 1. He was there for the merger of United and Continental, but never merged the contracts for the pilot's flight attendants, leaving the entire staff disliking the guy. He is also blamed with taking people's pensions, and making a bunch of people relocate to Chicago and then laying them off. 2. On top of that, at the beginning of every flight he would have a video of himself talking about how great UA is. The comments from the flight attendants are hilarious. 3. Started cheapening the food and international first business. My favorite is their old champagne, Chateau de Jeff. 4. Jeff lied to Cleveland and closed their hub anyways. This was a big reason United merger was approved. 5. One of Jeff's underlings was caught trashing elite members, which caused a lot of very high frequency flyers to leave. 6. Jeff eventually got fired for bribing some guy in Jersey. He got fired, and paid like 10 million. It's good to be Jeff. A chain of opticians in the Edinburgh area called Browns decided to rebrand to Brown Eye Specialists. Rebranded all the shop fronts too, with the words Brown Eye being the most prominent. They've now gone back to Brown's opticians. Pepsi started a marketing campaign in Taiwan. The translation of the Pepsi slogan come alive with the Pepsi generation came out as Pepsi will bring your ancestors back from the dead. McDonald's and their Olympics promotion in the 80s. It was kind of like their Monopoly game. You'd buy an item. It would have a peel off tag with an Olympic event. If the US won a medal in that event, the tag would entitle you to a free item. Depending on the medal won. The problem is that they calculated medal winnings based on the last Olympics the US participated in, in 1976, in which Soviet countries and America all competed. The US boycotted the 1980 games in Moscow, but McDonald's didn't account for Soviet countries boycotting the 1984 games in Los Angeles. Without the Soviet competition, the US Dominated a lot of events and McDonald's was on the hook for why I more free items than they thought. The Simpsons spoofed the whole thing with Krusty Burger running a similar promotion. The Tay Tweets fiasco. Microsoft launched an AI with the personality of a teenager with zero chill. That phrase alone is a PR disaster. But on top of that, she was also programmed to actually learn from the tweets it received, and adjust her speech to it. So when 4chan got wind of it, they overloaded her system with all kinds of Nazi propaganda. And after only a couple of hours, Tay was turned into a genocidal, anti-Semitic ultra -fascist. In my book that was a win. I remember there was a PI guy who did a press conference for a new computer, when that was a big deal. After praising the heck out of the current model, he uttered the words, and next year's model will be even better. So the buying public decided Enmus to wait for next year's model, which never came because there were no profits from the current year. The Clumpy's ice cream near my house had flyers made one year and the person who made the flyers left the L out and I goes nobody noticed until it was too late. There were flyers that said Clumpy's ice cream all over the place. I spent way too long trying to figure out what clumps meant. 
People seem to have forgotten the crap show unleashed in 2013 with Don Matrick and the Xbox One always online policies. Those were some dark days. I remember when Sony showed the how to share a game on PS4 video, which they clearly made like an hour before, it was hilarious. You just know someone at Microsoft was like okay, 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 frick it, get rid of this always online DRM crap, we get it. I don't know if we have any wrestling fans here, but the way the WWE handled the Chris Benoit fiasco was pretty insane. On the weekend of the 22nd of June 2007, professional wrestler Chris Benoit strangled his wife and son and then committed suicide himself. Benoit, a long time, widely respected veteran of the business, had told the WWE that he needed to go home because his son was coughing up blood, he missed three house shows, he murdered them over the course of the weekend and took his own life at the end of the weekend. Benoit reached out to friends, to be discovered after the deaths, upon committing suicide and eventually was discovered by cops on the 25th. The following Monday, the WWE found this out that Monday, around 4pm, and this is when this story gets crazy. Now at this time, one of the big WWE stories was that, the week before on Monday Night Raw, Vince McMahon had been blown up and killed at the tail end of the broadcast. The show on the 25th was going to be a kayfabe memorial show in honor of Vince McMahon. Immediately after finding out about Panoid, on the 25th, the WWE and McMahon decided to break character and host a tribute memorial show to Chris Benoit. The WWE was not aware that it was a murder-suicide. Shortly after the three-hour program dedicated to Benoit and what he meant to the wrestling community, it came out what had really happened, and the WWE moved as quickly as possible to distance themselves from Benoit and scrub him from their history. It was madness. Sarah Palin or rather her selection as a VP candidate for McCain. I remember hearing the announcement and a part of my younger mind, I was 21-ish, was okay, they are aiming for demographics and then she opened her mouth. Then the Katie Couric interview occurred where she couldn't name a thing she'd read, then Tina Fey started playing her on SNL. Later was told that my grandfather, who is Republican to the bone, saw her introduction, turned to an aunt and said they just lost. That's true. I was just 18 then and was leaning heavily towards McCain, because experience would translate into knowing how to handle the mortgage crisis and wars. But then he picked Sarah Palin, completely undermining the one objective advantage he had over Obama. And people say VPs can't influence elections. Cigarette companies trying to spin the benefits of smoking. Remember when they tried to convince us that smaller infant weights were a preferred thing? Or that smoking was healthy? Every time they turned their PR engine on, stupidity and arrogance poured out. I go to UC Davis. Our chancellor spent $200,000 to clean up the school's online image after the infamous pepper spray incident, only to have the story return with a vengeance when this news got out. Fortunately, she resigned this month. Currently, Yik Yak, a GPS-based app similar to Twitter, is going through a shit show of PR. The newest update basically completely ruined the entire app. And despite literally all of their users reaching out and urging they revert the changes, the official Facebook page has basically said sorry, no, it's insane. The NYPD once had a campaign on Twitter asking people to post pictures of themselves with NY's finest. They ended up posting a bunch of pictures of police brutality. A few years ago here in Louisville Jewish Hospital mailed out flyers about their cardiac unit heart health etc. I think they had a slogan about high blood pressure being a ticking time bomb. The flyers were sent in a small tube that looked like a bomb to get their point across. All this did was cause people to call the police after looking in their mailbox. New coke. That was nasty. It happened when I was a kid and had the metabolism to down super big gulps of coke. I think my 42 year old body would go into shock if I tried that crap now. If you do not know, Coke changed their flavor to some mix between Pepsi and Horse Pee. It did not work well. That is why Coke has classic written on the bottles still. I maintain new Coke was a genius ploy to boost the sales on Coke Classic. Which it did. A lot. There were runs on stores that had Coca-Cola still on the shelves. The turnaround was so fast that I just don't see how it wasn't planned. Smaller scale than some of these. 
but a local bistro in an artsy area of town protested a gay rights event by saying gays wouldn't be served in their restaurant and that they would only have gospel music on their stage that was in the bar area of the restaurant in counter protest. Most people just went to the only other restaurant with a bar in town, while church groups came out against the owner for selling alcohol in the first place. Politics aside, please, the initial logo for Trump Pence was pretty bad. How no graphic designers looked at that and went wait a second, or maybe one did and let it go. Similarly, the Iowa State Fair was some spectacular trolling. I still can't think of carnival cruise lines without the poop cruise coming to mind, either. Palmer Lucky and Oculus, paid mods on Steam, Paranautical Activity Dev Threatening Gavin, everything about Phil Fish. I'm a patent attorney. This is my favorite intellectual property story. It concerns Lino, the kitchen floor material. A chap called Walton invented Lino and patented it in 1860. He originally called it Camptican, which was deliberately close to another brand name at the time. Ironic, as it turned out. He then renamed the material linoleum and set up the linoleum manufacturing company to make and sell it. His company was called linoleum and the product was called linoleum. It was a big success. Lots of other companies were interested in selling similar floor coverings and in fact came up with better ways to manufacture it. As soon as the product was out of patent, the market was flooded with knockoffs. What normally happens then is that the original inventors have established their brand so well that it's perceived as the original premium choice and still gives them a competitive advantage over the copies. But linoleum really shot themselves in the foot. Because for the duration of the patent the floor covering was made and sold only by linoleum. That was the only name that customers knew that type of flooring by. It was completely descriptive. And because of that linoleum weren't able to trade market having neglected to do so before its success. It would be like the inventors of carpet saying, in 2016, that actually they wanted exclusive use of that name. So all their competition were legitimately allowed to sell their products as linoleum, a PR disaster for the linoleum manufacturing company. This is precisely the reason why so many almost generic trademark owners are so precious about the use of their product names. For example, Write in the press about Port Acobins and you'll promptly receive a letter from Port Acobins lawyers reminding you that the correct term is temporary structure or something similar. The GTX 970. At first people were wondering why the GTX 970 started to give them degraded performance in titles that used more than 3.5 GBs of RAM. People thought that Nvidia just made a mistake and that a software update would magically solve the problem. Nope. Turns out the GTX 970 has two blocks of memory one being 3.5 GBs of fast VRAM and the other 512 megabytes of the 4 GB VRAM was a lot slower, 1 stroke 5 the speed. This was a huge shock because all those people who bought GTX 970s for on sleek config to completely crush 1440p and 2160k titles basically got swindled. The GTX 970 is very good, but only in the first 3.5 gigabytes. After that you're basically crap out of luck. Apparently there was a miscommunication between the PR and the development department and Nvidia as a company got burned hard for it. They ended up settling for paying $30 to every GTX 970 owner on the lawsuit and yet, Nvidia definitely screwed up on the GTX 970 because it was literally one of the most widely used cards for its price bracket. Some years back FC Bayern were in need of a quality player and suddenly a Facebook message appeared on their page. Big transfer announcement at 12 o'clock. Everyone got freaking hyped what player it would be. 12 o'clock live feed from the press conference. Video of all our star players praising the new signing. Not saying a name. Press speaker says the player couldn't be here because everything went so fast. But they got a picture. Shows picture of your own Facebook page. Big big shit storm. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video.
Bye for now.